Hello and greeting to all the people of the planet, whoever you are, wherever you are, the Baha'i greeting to all of you. This is the last part of the third part. Uh, we're going to talk about the evolution. And in this section, we're going to explain uh, the Baha'i faith, the evolution that is within the Baha'i faith. This is my concept and my philosophy and reconstruction of the writing of the Baha'u'llah. Not necessarily the only theory that could exist. There's no such thing. It is what logically I gathered it to be. To begin with though, I will speak of the constitution of the universe. I'm going to use my paper that I wrote before and I'm going to read it sometimes and then explain. Uh, in the book called Some Answered Questions, Abdul Baha, which we Baha, we call him master, he's the master of the universe. This is what he states, quote, this nature is subjected to an absolute organization to determine laws, to complete order, and the finished design. So, if we contemplate on this word by word and analytically, analytically to try to look at it, we can see that in the Baha'i faith, although sometimes things may look chaotic, like earthquake or sudden death of a person, or God knows so many, uh, uh, they say galaxies even vanish, the stars, you know, they go and come back. It seems chaotic, but actually it is an organization that is very well organized. If it is organized, then it would have to need laws to organize it. So the world is an organization, not a chaos, according to Abdul Baha. And in order to get it organized and to be organized, there are laws, the laws that we know that governs the galactical bodies to the, you know, the law within the quantum mechanic that makes, let's say, proton uh, to be positively charged and the electron to be negatively charged or so on and so forth. And these laws, according to Abdul Baha, that organizes the universe, creates an order. This order is more or less alphabetical. So it's like A, B, C, D, just like one, two, three, four. The nature is the same way. If you look at it, all the elements are coming in this way. Like hydrogen is you know, number one, and then helium is two, and so on. If you look at the nature, you can see how this process goes from simplicity to complexity. You know, there's first minerals, they have to be there, so to create plants, the plants have to be there to become food for animals, and then animals have to be there for human to come, and so on and so forth. So there's an order, and the whole thing has a design. There is a design which uh, put this together. So, for example, look at the design of an atom. The nucleus, which carries most of the weight, is in the center. And then there are orbits around it. Uh, and the first orbit has got two electrons, second orbit has eight. So if we look at it, we can see there is a design, there is a shape. Uh, natural design, natural geometry is there. It's not Euclidean mathematics, it's not a Euclidean design, there's no perfect circle or perfect this or that, but it is in a natural way there are shapes and design that things fall into those designs. This is basically, I call these four elements or the uh, constitution of the nature. Going back to the evolution, I'm going to read that. My topic here, it says evolution of Baha'i opinion. 
At one glance, the parameter of a Baha'i theory on evolution may look like this. 1. Biological life has been initiated in our planet Earth by the potential capacities. The undergoing process has been gradual and progressive. So things are happening gradually and progressively. Overall, of course. According to the law of composition and decomposition, the evolution of any organism, individually or as a whole, once reaches its climax, then undergoes gradual decomposition or devolution, till it becomes unfit and extinct. Number three, the source of the changes are what nature dictates through the gene aberration followed by hybridizations of two individual opposite sexes. Four, the path of change may seem spontaneous and random, but the final results are calculative and predetermined. And number five, the oscillations and the flexibility of the randomness and chance is limited and confound. Any change exceptions beyond the natural limits would result in enormity and monstrosity of the species. Number six, the predeterminations and limitation of change is maintained by the metaphysical factor. What I see to be a natural possibility, not natural selection, as it was said by Darwin. Because natural selection immediately creates selector. But natural possibilities are essentially the laws that make certain design possible. Uh, so if there is uh, two hydrogen and then there's one oxygen, they could form water because the, or the last orbit of oxygen has got six and based on the design, it could be eight and the two is contributed by two hydrogen. Therefore, two hydrogen and six of the oxygen electron, they make a full orbit. Therefore, this is a natural possibility. There's no selection when hydrogen and the oxygen, they come together, selected to be water. It's just this design and this law that creates this shape is already there, like a hole. Matter falls into it. So, uh, it is like the genetical information dictating the limits and the path of the changes that has to be occurred. The first one is the, let's go to the principle of gradualism. It's very important to hear, listen to these quotations of Shobhi Effendi and Abdullah. I'm going to read again. The term is a reference to the scientific theories of evolution. In almost any evolutionary concept, the life has begun gradually through evolutionary process. These gradual changes ultimately has been behind the evolution of a new species. According to the materialist philosophy, quantitative changes during the passage of time will ultimately result in qualitative changes. This is how gradual changes in South African apes, as we spoke before, Australopithecin, brought about and gave rise to the evolution of present man. Classically speaking, when one species evolves in other species, this means the previous species has vanished from the face of the earth in order for a new one to appear in its place. Finally. The trend of the evolutionary changes moves through simplicity to complexity. Now, Baha'i doctrine holding to the principles of the religion has to be according to science and logic, believes in gradual appearance of the organic life in earth, from simplicity to complexity, but does not accept one species evolves into other species by means of disappearance of the original one. Shovey Effendi says, the guardian of the Baha'i faith, quote, Organic evolution of the mankind has been slow and gradual. In the page 182 of the promised day has come. This is quote, quotation from that book. Abdul Baha explains, quote, Then it is clear that original matter, which is, which is in the embryonic state, 
and mingled and composed elements which were its earliest form gradually grew and developed during many ages and cycles passing from one shape and from to and form to another until they appeared in this perfection this system this organization and this establishment throughout the supreme wisdom of god let us return to our subject that man in his beginning of his existence and in the womb of the earth like the embryo in the womb of the mother gradually grew and developed and passed from one form to another from one shape to another until he appeared with this beauty and perfection this force and this power it is certain that in the beginning he had not this loveliness and grace and elegance and he only by degrees attained this shape, this form and beauty, and this grace. Page 183 of the Book of the Master, Some Answered Questions. He further explains, quote, So also, the formation of man in the matrix of the world was in the beginning like the embryo. Then gradually he made progress in the in perfections in perfectness and grew and developed until he reached the state of maturity when the mind and the spirit became visible in the greatest power in the beginning of his formation the mind and the spirit also existed but they were hidden later they were manifested in the womb of the world mind and the spirit also existed in the embryo but they were concealed afterward they appeared so it is in the seed the tree exists but it is hidden and concealed when it develops and grows the complete tree appears in the same way the growth and the development of all being is gradual this is the universal divine organization and a natural system the seed does not at once become a tree the embryo does not at once become a man the mineral does not suddenly become a stone. No, they grow and develop gradually and attain the limit of perfection. Page 198 from the book, Some Answers Questions from the writing of His Holiness, Abdu'l-Bahá. Now, we're going to my writing. As we can see, the concept of the gradualism and the process of simplicity towards complexity is a Baha'i concept as well. However, when it comes to the idea of one species gradually becoming another species, a process called speciation, Baha'i faith decisively and strongly rejects the notion. According to the philosophy of the Baha'i faith, just as the entire information about the organic being is stored in its DNA, the entire information of the universe is stored in the prime matter from which the universe has evolved. According to this opinion, everything that has evolved and is evolving should be tracing back to the original matter as a potential or virtual existence. 